Hey everyone, Bob Dylan, It's All Right My I'm Only Bleeding, from the great album, Bringing It All Back Home, recorded in March 1965. Now Dylan was performing this song for his audiences in 64, so he wrote it in 64. It's a fantastic song, it's one of my all-time favorite Dylan songs. Not only lyrically, which we'll talk about here in a moment, but also musically. There's an internal propulsion, drive, the way that the, each line is just thrown out rhythmically, the way the chords have the descending bass line, the chromatic descending bass line, just the uh, powerful performances that he's given of this song over all these years, and he still performs it quite often. One of my all-time favorites, and I think a lot of you probably agree with me on that, and so I'm looking forward to talking about it. Before I do, let me show you how it's structured out. You could say each section is made up of one, two, three stanzas, and then a three-line chorus, if you will. And each of the stanzas has five lines that end in rhymes, and then a sixth line that ends in a different rhyme. So you have the five lines that rhyme, and then the sixth line, and the five lines in the sixth line, and then two lines that rhyme, and then the third line there. So you have the sixth, the sixth, the sixth, and the third lines all rhyming with each other. So in this first case here, you have you know, noon, spoon, balloon, moon, <laughs> soon, and then trying. And so the trying rhymes with the dying and the crying and the sighing. So that's the way, that, the way it's written out, very structured. And then in the second, second uh, part part, once again, you have the five, 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 two, and then the four lines that rhyme. Same thing. And you see that as well on the third, the third section, the fourth section, five, 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 two. And then on the last section, and this is something Dylan does fairly frequently, he adds an extra line to that last stanza. So you have five, five, and then five plus one equals six. So he adds an extra line to the last stanza, and that kind of keeps that, that drive, that propulsion, that, the, the repeating lines going to build the tension a little bit right before the end. I love how he d does that. He does that in a, quite a few number of songs. But yeah, he's a, he's a very fine poet. Songwriter, yes, but poet as well. And you, and you can see that he, he spends a lot of time on the structure and uh, making it seem logical. Really good stuff. Okay, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> some people have mentioned that this song, being that it opens with the words, darkness at the break of noon, might be related in some way to the 1940 novel by Arthur Kessler named Dar Darkness at Noon. And this novel was basically a, a novel telling a story that um, has as its theme the oppressive government uh, run by Stalin. It's funny, in, in the novel, Stalin's referred to as number one, which reminds me of The Prisoner, if you've ever seen that TV show. But yeah, so he's a dictator, he's oppressive. And uh, it, the, the, the gist of the novel, too, is, has um, a few themes. One of them is that man is basically incapable of governing himself well without falling to tyranny and corruption and this kind of thing. Another thing is that as technology progresses, when you have leaps of technology, especially rapid leaps, leaps of technology, you have that accompany, accompanies um, uh, intellectual regression. So you have an increase of technology rapid, rapid, which has an intellectual regression relative to the technology. And it takes decades or uh, generations for that to come back together again. Of course, by that time, you've had another leap. So in other words, you always have the masses of the people that are always a little bit confused and a little bit out of whack with things and of course what happens then is you have a vacuum that created that draws in tyrannical forces uh, people were hypocritical manipulative and so that's kind of what the the novel was getting at and some people think Dylan was somewhat influenced by that because the song is definitely about that kind of thing it's, it's sort of a grim portrait of, of the human condition existential angst uh, of having to deal with societal coercion, manipulation. But I also think that throughout the song, there's little lights of hope, of victory, 
See, Dylan's always been, <clears throat> based upon what I can tell by reading his uh, lyrics, he's always been very much into individualism, the individual versus a coerced societal norm, okay? A collective mass. He's always been very much in favor of liberty, individual liberty, breaking away from all of the things that, that basically render you a dead man, okay? He, he not busy being born, is busy dying, that kind of thing. So this, this song just goes into that big time. I have been looking over this song for the last two weeks, every day, just, just thinking and thinking and thinking. And every day I come up with something new. It's just amazing. Great poetry does that. It, it's just pregnant with interpretive possibilities. And I, I love it. Love it to death. So my latest interpretation is as follows. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's get through it here. Darkness at the break of noon. And what that means is at the break of noon, right at noon, it's almost like this is a, uh, almost like this is a scheduled or planned or sanctioned event. It doesn't say darkness at 11.37. It says break of noon. <laughs> That's something I thought about, you know. So it's, it's, it reminds me a little bit <clears throat> when uh, in the Bible, when Jesus was on the cross and at noon, the sixth hour, which, which, which uh, on the Israeli time was uh, 12 o'clock noon, because the Israeli time, the first hour, 6 a.m. The Roman clock is where you have the uh, day starting at midnight. But on the sixth hour, bam, everything went dark for three hours. You know, when, when Christ died on the cross, basically. The loss of the light that he represented, that, that kind of thing. So that's another thing you can kind of think about when you see darkness at the break of noon. Also, it says here, shadows even, this, and of course, too, also, you might want to think about this, too. This was written in 64. And uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated, in, you know, December of 63 at 12.30 p.m. So it's close to noon. And you know, we all know that the JFK assassination affected Dylan very much. You know, murder most foul. He's still, he's still bringing it up. So that was a really difficult time in American uh, history at that time. And it was very close to when he wrote this story. Okay. So darkness at the break of noon shadows even the silver spoon. That implies that not only this, that those with, with the silver spoon, in other words, prosperous, wealthy, it shadows even them, implying that, you know, the poor and rich, basically, everybody. Uh, the handmade blade, the child's balloon. The handmade blade, I, I think of a handmade blade being fashioned uh, when, when there's a need to either protect yourself in, in, a, in a, like in prison, protect yourself from, from uh, you know, attack, or to inflict uh, violence on others anyhow. So it's violence or, or just a, a state of uh, not very peaceful condition, <laughs> one way or the other, either, whether you're protecting yourself or inflicting violence for, out of malicious intent, whatever, versus a, chi a child's balloon, which implies peace, uh, innocence, that kind of thing. But in other words, this is going to, this darkness is going to cover everything. It's going to affect everything. And what kind of darkness do you have at noon? Do you have a solar eclipse? Well, it can't be that because a solar eclipse is where you have the moon blocking the sun. I remember the solar eclipse in 1972 when I was young, right in the middle of the day, it kind of got dark. Well, this is a deeper darkness than that. This is not a solar eclipse because it says this darkness eclipses both the sun and moon. Everything. Complete lack of light and, and just just a, a almost a um, an existential or spiritual darkness this is really heavy heavy stuff and it's hard to understand it says here to understand you know too soon there is no sense in trying you can't understand this why is this happening this is this is a profound darkness and what what could be man, how could this be manifested in people that caused this kind of darkness. Well, in that book that I was just telling you about, it was the oppressive government of Stalin, that kind of thing, as well as, you know, technological leaps and the accompanying uh, intellectual, you know, regression. In other words, can't understand what's going on. But I like the next, fr next uh, lines here. <clears throat> Pointed threats, they bluff with scorn. Bravado. Yaki, yaki, bravado. 
uh, tough talk. Suicide remarks are torn from a fool's gold mouthpiece. The hollow horn plays wasted words. Fool's gold mouthpiece, that's just fake. It's fake gold. It's, it's not, it's, it's, you know, not real. Uh, a hollowed horn, empty, uh, bravado, bluffing, scorn, uh, wasted words, just, just yak. And what's the suicide remarks? You could dig your own grave with, with your mouth. Later on in, in this song, he talks about um, while one who sings with his tongue on fire. I'm pretty sure he's referring to James and Proverbs and Matthew, where, where they talk about the, the, your tongue being on fire and the damage it can do. How damn, it, you basically dig your own grave if, you, if your tongue is on fire. So it's a suicide remark. It's just, and you know, in the case of something like um, a government, you know, acting all tough and, and, and provoking other governments and provo and you end up in war over some stupid bravado, empty words, bluffing. And sure enough, that's where we go with the next line here. It says, um, temptation fl page flies out the door and you follow. If you fall into temptation, you fall into temptation to, to either uh, be this way or to follow these kind of leaders, you find yourself at war, it says. You watch waterfalls of pity roar. You feel to moan. But unlike before, back when you were a hey, old tough guy, now you discover that you're just one more person crying. So you basically, yeah, buyer's remorse a little bit here, listen to these knuckleheads, and now you're in, in the throes of war. Misery. So don't fear if you hear a foreign sound to your ear. This is see every one of these every one of these these grim sections is capped off with those two lines that are going to be a little more uplifting. Don't fear if you hear a foreign sound to your ear. It's all right, Ma. I'm only sighing. It's all right, but I'm only sighing. I'm exasperated. I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm commenting on this frustration. But but I'm just I'm just sighing. Don't worry. Hang in there. Let me tell you another thing about this song, okay? The title of the song is It's All Right, My I'm Only Bleeding, which he does not sing in, in the entire song. In the entire song. When I, first saw, when I first heard this song and heard Darkness at the Break of Noon and thought of the Jesus on the cross, you know, the crucifixion, I thought of his mother in, in John, the Gospel of John. His, Jesus' his mother is at the base of the cross. And I thought of him just saying, it's all right, Ma, I'm only bleeding. It's, it's okay. It's okay. You know, I, I kind of thought of that. But anyhow. All right, let's go to the next section. Uh, this is so good. All of this stuff is great. As some won victory, some downfall. This is where you have the division. You got, two, you got some people saying, hey, this is great, man. We got victory. You know, and then the other people saying, no, this is bad. We're going to have a downfall. Dif different ways of looking at these things. Private reasons, great or small, can be seen in the eyes of those that call to make all that should be killed to crawl. It's not enough to kill them. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna humiliate them. It's just that this bravado, this, 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 um, you know, warlike attitude. These pointed threats and just make all that should be killed to crawl. It's like hawks. And here you have the dove saying, while well, others don't hate nothing at all except hatred. No, let's just no, let's get, let's get, just get along. Let's, we shouldn't be doing that. This is downfall, not victory. So you got hawks and doves here. And, of course, you can have neither one is great, to be honest with you. Because sometimes you do need to fight. But anyhow, here we go. The next one, disillusioned words like bullets bark as human gods aim for their mark. I love that human gods part. Acting like gods. You know, there's people that think we could save the earth. You ever seen that George Carlin skit? It, the part where he, he talks about how arrogant we are. We think we could actually control nature. We can control how people think. Uh, we can force people into being a certain way. That never works well. You end up with having tyranny and, and misery. Uh, disillusioned words like bullets bark. These people are, are deluded. They're disillusioned. They're brainwashed. It's like the blind leading the blind to think that you can control people in this way. And, um, and of course, you end up stepping into a pile of you-know-what 
because it's just miserable. They make everything from toy guns that spark to flesh-colored Christ that glow in the dark. This is a game to them. You know, the, the guns, the weapons, the bombs. It's just a game. Uh, hell, we have violence in our society. We've got video games. You know, we, we trivialize violence. We've got violence on TV. We sell guns to our kids. It's just all trivial. It's all a game to these people. It's war games, you know. To flesh color Christ that glow in the dark. Even religion is used as a commodity. Is used as a, some way of um, manipulating, coercing people. It's easy to see without looking too far that not much is really sacred. Boy, ain't that the truth. They trivialized, trivialized everything, made everything vulgar. While preachers preach of evil fates, teachers teach that knowledge weights can lead to $100 plates. I think this is referring to politicians being bought and sold, you know, charity events to raise money for various causes, you know, various things that are just corrupt to their core. Um, also, preachers with their with their prosperity gospel, you know, the, follow the money, and you get all of that. Goodness hides behind its gates. You, anyone that has any goodness is afraid to appear, afraid to show themselves. They're hiding. They don't want to come out because if you come out, that's you're basically asking for it, you know. But even the president of the United States sometimes must have to stand naked. Everybody's got to be exposed. Everybody's going to be exposed. Even the president of the United States is not immune to these forces. The leader of the free world. Yeah, okay. And though the rules of the road have been lodged, oh yeah, they've been lodged, it's only people's games that you've got to dodge. It's all games. Manipulations. Nonsense. It's all right, Ma. I can make it. So there again, the, th the three lines uh, ending of each section. I'm okay, Ma. I can handle this. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's, let's, let's hear some more nonsense. Advertising signs, they con you into thinking you're the one that can be, do can be done, that can do what's never been done, that can win what's never been won. Nonsense. Propaganda, flattery, right? I want you. <laughs> it's, all, it's all garbage, nonsense. Meantime, life outside goes on all around you. You ever notice that? Just just turn off the turn off the TV, turn off the news for about two, three weeks, and just go out. And you'll notice before you before long, you're okay. You're gonna be fine. It's a bunch of nonsense, these clowns. As a matter of fact, it says so in the next verse here. You lose yourself. If you lose yourself in this garbage, you reappear. Uh, you get away from it and suddenly find you got nothing to fear. Alone you stand with nobody near. You know, if you break away from all the garbage, you're going to be alone. There's not going to be many people out there with you, especially if you speak out against it. Oh, my goodness. Cowards love company. They love company. Tyrants love company. You break away from it, oh, you're going to be, you're going to be hated. When a trembling, distant voice, unclear, startles your sleeping ears to hear that somebody thinks they really found you. You're always tempted to go back to this stuff. You're always tempted to turn back on the neat TV. Turn, turn back, listen to it. <laughs> a question in your nerves is lit. Yet you know there is no answer fit to satisfy and ensure, ensure you not to quit. You know better. The temptation is there, sure, but you know better. To keep it in your mind and not forget that it is not he or she or them or it that you belong to. You don't belong to this nonsense. Break away from it. Be an individual. Not a collective whole with a bunch of knuckleheads. And here we get to the ending, uh, the ending three lines again. Although the masters make the rules for the wise men and the fools, I got nothing, Ma, to live up to. I don't have to do this stuff. I can reappear and suddenly find I got nothing to fear. I don't. I, I can. I can remember, not forget. 
that it's not he or she or them or it that I belong to. The hell with them. <laughs> For them that must obey authority, that they do not respect in any degree, who despise their jobs, their destinies, I mean, there's people that have to do that. I mean, you got to put food on the table. I got to do what I got to do. I got to, you know, if I, I can't speak out, I'll lose my job. I can't be a maverick. I can't be a renegade. I got to fall in line, man. I got to, I got to, I got to toe the line. I hate, I hate it. I despise my jobs. I despise my destiny. I despise who I am. I hate, I hate it. Those folks speak jealously of them that are free. You break away and they're je they don't like it. Cowards love company. They cultivate their flowers to be nothing more than something they invest in. <laughs> it's all about, I've got a lot invested here. I can't just give it up. I got a lot going on here. Even, even nature. I went, to, I went to Big Sky, Montana several years ago. Now, when you go to Big Sky, Montana, why are you going there? to see one of the most beautiful places, right? And I was, I was shocked to see golf courses carved into the side of the mountains. I'm like, are you kidding me? You, you can't go to Big Sky, Montana without playing golf. <laughs> what the hell? And art, art is, is, is turned into, you know, inside the museums, infinity goes up on trial. Even art is being judged. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, how much does it cost? If it's expensive, it must be good. <laughs> Just nonsense. Where are we? While some on principles baptized to strict party flat platform ties. Boy, is that not the truth? Pick a side. Are you on the left? You're on the right. You got to pick one. You got to baptize yourself into that, that religion. That, that religion of the right or original religion of the left. You have to do that. You got to pick a side now. Okay? On principles, you're baptized to strict party platform ties. You must pick a side. Oh, yeah. Surround yourself with like minds. That's what cowards love to do. Cowards love company. You know, those people that are afraid to go off on their own and think independently. Oh, yeah. Social clubs in drag disguise. That's what, that's what all this is. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Yeah, we're in it together. Oh, yeah. Don't you hate the other side? Oh, we do. Yeah. They should be killed, but let's make them crawl. Let's, let's, let's punish them for thinking differently than we think. Outsiders, they can freely criticize. <laughs> Look at this clown. This person's not on the left or the right. Must be a conspiracy theorist or something, some radical. They tell nothing except who to idolize. Oh, they'll tell you who to idolize, all right. Oh yeah, they sure will. And then say, God bless him. <laughs> They got God on their side. It doesn't matter. The right, the left, it doesn't matter. They all think they got God on their side, right? They all do. And you notice it doesn't matter who's the president. It doesn't matter. They always say, and may God bless America. They always end off that. And I'm thinking to myself, really? You think God's blessing you? You think God's blessing all of us here? The stuff we're talking about? I doubt that. While one who sings with his tongue on fire, James 3, Proverbs 16, Matthew 15, and other places. The Bible makes it very clear. And you don't need the Bible. You know it's clear. Someone with their tongue on fire, loose tongue, loose, what's the old saying? Loose tongues sink ships. Maybe I'm mixing my old sayings. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're just digging your own grave. While one who sings with his tongue on fire gargles in the rat race choir. I love that line. Gargles in the rat race, race, rat race choir, bent out of shape from society's pliers. Here we're starting to see a little bit of empathy for these people. A little bit of empathy. You're bent out of shape from society. The coercion, society's pliers. Isn't that a great way of putting it? Bending and folding and molding and shaping into the type of person you need to be. Oh, yeah. Care, it cares not to come up any higher, but rather get you down in a hole that he's in. Hey, you need to be like we all. We all need to think alike. If you don't think alike, we'll destroy you. Oh, yeah. We'll censor you. We'll get you the hell out of here. But you need to be like us. We've been bent by society's pliers. We got those tongues on fire. Oh, yeah. We're in the rat race choir. 
We don't care to go up any higher. We want to get you down to where we are. Cowards love company. But the problem is with this, with cowardice. Let me tell you something about cowardice. Cowardice brings company, loves company. But you know what cowardice does? It creates a vacuum. Cowardice creates a vacuum. And you know who loves a vacuum? Tyrants. Tyranny are attracted to vacuums. So cowardice creates a vacuum. In come the tyrants. Oh, yeah. But I mean no harm. Now, here we go to the last three lines again. But I mean no harm or put, nor put fault on anybody who lives in a vault. I mean no harm nor put fault on anyone who lives in a vault. Hey, I understand. I'm not trying to put everybody down. You know, I understand how it has to be this way sometimes. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you hate your jobs. You gotta do what you gotta do. You don't want to, you know, lose everything. You know, I understand. <clears throat> but it's all right, Ma, if I can't please him. If you break away from the norm, you're not gonna be pleasing people. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Tell you that right now. Even if you're nice to him, say, I understand, Bob. I understand why you got to do these things. I understand why you got to be this way. You got to think this way. But I just don't think that way. Well, you, well, well, you're not my friend anymore. Okay. Well, I'm sorry I can't please you. You're an indip individual. Move on. Old lady judges watch people in pairs. Limited in sex, they dare to push fake morals, insult, and stare. <laughs> I like how, you know, people who uh, don't like what they see, they tend to look at it a lot. <laughs> They're hypocrites. While money doesn't talk, it swears obscenity. Yes. Money doesn't just talk, it swears obscenity. Who really cares? Propaganda, it all is phony. It's all nonsense. Money's got a loud voice. Yes, it is. It's powerful, but it's still nonsense. While them that defend what they cannot see with a killer's pride, security, it blows the minds most bitterly for them that think death's honesty won't fall upon them naturally. You can't take it with you, folks. We're all going to the same place. We're all going to go. They live their lives as if they're not going to eventually all, we're not going to all be in the grave one day, right? Life sometimes must get lonely. If, if, you, if you're focused only on power, greed, manipulating other people, right? Oppression, tyranny, corruption. In the long run, it's a lonely life. Because even though you got people around you, all these cowards are around you, yeah, 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 they don't mean it. They're just as fake as you are. <laughs> My eyes collide head on with stuffed graveyards. You know how many people have died because of nonsense like this? Because of that bravado? The suicide remarks? The, the waterfalls of pity roaring because of you're at war? And just... Look how many people have died under Stalin. You know, it's just insane. Hitler. And, and tyrants are attracted to the vacuum created by cowardice. False goals. Now, in, in BobDillon's.com, uh, the lyrics say false gods. My eyes collide head on with stuffed graveyards, false gods, but he sings false goals. I scuff at pettiness, which plays so rough. Just such nonsense. You, you ever notice how bullied people are over petty nonsense? People's flimsy agendas and all? I walk upside down inside handcuffs, kick my legs to crash it off, say, okay, I've had enough. What else can you show me to heck with this stuff? I just threw that in. And if my thought dreams could be seen, they'd probably put my head in a guillotine. But it's all right, Ma. It's life and life only. This is life. This is what you have to deal with in life. I love to put my head in a guillotine. You know whose head, heads were put in guillotines? The Apostle James, the Apostle Paul, John the Baptist. <laughs> a lot of people have been beheaded over what they thought 
they were a little off the beaten path a little bit there, you know, in their thinking process. <laughs> That's the way it is, man. If you are an individual and you go your own way, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to be punished for it. But, you know, you can do it. You can make it, he says. It's all right, Ma. I'm only sighing. It's all right. I can make it, Ma. I got nothing, Ma, to live up to. It's all right, Ma, if I can't please him. It's all right, Ma. It's life and life only. It's all right, Ma. I'm only bleeding. And bleeding is not the end of the world. I like how the song, the song begins with light or the, 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 the absence thereof, darkness at the break of noon. And it ends with life. So you could look at that in, in, in an existential way or a spiritual way. Either way you want to look at it. And that's the way it is with Bob Dylan's music, his lyrics. They often have a, a physical, existential component as well as a uh, you know, spiritual, transcendental almost component. You, and, there, and, and that's why it opens up all kind of interpretive possibilities with his lyrics. And you could just have a lot of fun with it. I had fun doing this, folks. And again, tomorrow and the next day, I'll have some other probably ideas that may even negate what I just said today. But this is just fun to do. If you guys have any thoughts, um, you know, about what this great song is about, it's so great. Hey, let me know. I'm enjoying doing this. Take care. Bye-bye.